Good evening, everyone. Thanks again for joining online. Once again, I, I do want to um, quickly apologize for the fact that there has not been as much um, content going out. Um, well, I don't want to call it content because it's not really what this is about, but you know what I mean. There haven't been as many videos going out um, for not necessarily bad reasons. Um, good news is I'm back at work now, so... Um, but that is also partly why there's uh, not as many videos being put out. But I'm trying my best to keep up with them. Um, as you guys know, we've gone pre-recorded for a while. Um, at first it was just because Facebook was giving me grief tech-wise. But it actually ended up working out because um, as things started opening up, um, I found myself, you know, making plans and things. And it was nice to be able to, like, if I had a day where I wasn't doing much, I could sit there and film, like, a few videos and then just upload them and schedule them to post. So keep in mind when you're watching this, it may be very well a couple weeks into the future by the time you're seeing this um, into the future. I just made that sound so dramatic, like, it could be a couple weeks into the future. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is... Um, I'm still trying to make sure that I'm intentional about keeping this online ministry going, and as much as we are kind of getting back to the rat race, I'm trying to be really intentional about taking time aside to minister to you guys out there. And I think right now, even though we're out and about again, um, I think online ministry is still really critical right now because, um, because we are going back to things, we need that... I don't want to word it like this, but quote-unquote convenience of being able to access the gospel message. And some people are still not comfortable going out, and so I want them to be able to access these uh, videos. Speaking of videos, if you are new here and you're watching from YouTube, feel free to subscribe. If you're on Facebook, drop a like on the page. Um... I've got the email address in the description box, so be sure to reach out if you have any questions or concerns or if you're in need of prayer, and I'd love to touch base with you. So uh, tonight we're basically just going to start off by singing a quick chorus, because I know we haven't done as much music on here, so I thought we'd start off with a quick chorus, and then I just have a, a short little um, devotional message for you guys, and... So yeah, we'll, we'll head into that. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together online tonight, and uh, or whenever people are watching this, because whatever. But anyways, thank you for bringing us together whenever we're watching this video, and uh, God, just help this to be a time of uh, people learning about you and feeling closer to you. And not only that, Lord, but help this to continue to be not just a place where I post videos, but an online Christian community. And Lord, I thank you for what you've been doing through this online ministry. And God, just as much as you were working through it during the quarantine, Lord, I trust you're going to continue to work in it as we open up and as we head back to our daily activities. I trust that you're still going to use this online ministry. I trust that you have a purpose for it. And uh, so God, just help us tonight. Help everything we say and do here to glorify you and to lift up your name. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, if you are new here, welcome. Um, you'll notice that I, I use the, the reference of tonight a lot. How that started was many of you that have been here from, from the beginning. I'm making this sound like such a... I'm being really dramatic tonight. I'm just like, many of you who have been here from the beginning. Um, started this online ministry in March. Um, or might have been April. It was during the lockdown, I know that much, okay? So, um, many of you know that when I first started doing these videos, I actually did them live, and I would do them on, uh, I would do, like, the regular video on Tuesday nights, and I used to do a kid's video on Thursdays. That ended up kind of not happening as much, especially with me, like, going back to work and everything. I can barely get one video done, let alone two, so... Um, stay tuned for more details, because I might eventually bring back the kids thing, I don't know, but, um, 
I kind of ended up just stopping it for the re remainder of the summer. I found a lot of people weren't even really tuning in anyways, which is understandable because, like, kids were still going to day camp and things like that. So, anyway, um, but yeah, so a lot of you guys know I started off doing live streams and they would be on, like, in the evenings. So, I would use the tonight reference a lot, but I keep forgetting to take into account now that I'm doing pre-recorded, people could be watching this at different times. And not only that, but we do have some viewers from all over the world watching. So even if they are watching at the same time as us, in, in their country it may be a different time. So whatever time zone you're watching from, or whatever time of day you're watching, welcome. You're, I'm probably still going to end up using the Tonight reference, but oh well, at least I put that out there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, whenever you're watching, Thanks for being here. We're happy to have you. I don't know why I keep saying we. It's just me. That's another thing. Anyways, y'all did not come here to hear the references I keep making on these videos. Y'all came here to hear the gospel, so we're going to get to it. If you're at home, feel free to join in if you know the song. If you don't know the song, just listen to the words. that cape was not placed properly. Let's try that again, shall we? He is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is the Lord. Every knee shall Tonight's, uh, I don't know, devotional message, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't even know if it could be fully classified as a devotional. Anyway, the point is, um, a lot of times how I get, um, how I quote-unquote figure out what I'm going to do for these videos is, of course, like, as I've told you many times, I always pray for God to just instruct me on what he wants me to do, because this online ministry, it's, it's not about me, it's not for my personal, like, gain or, like, profit or anything like that, um, I just wanted a way to, it, I mean, it kind of started as a way of ministering to people even though we were staying at home, but even now that things are opened up, I just want to make the gospel accessible, and, uh, the internet is, is a great way to do that. And, uh, I think coronavirus has taught us that, you know, us as the church using technology is not a bad thing, as long as we don't compromise the gospel while doing so. But anyway, so, at first, what I'm going to tell you how I got this message, some of you are going to probably think it's a bit foolish, but watch until the end of the video and you'll understand why I'm referring to this. So, I'm going to link the video in the description, um, but basically, tonight's devotion, if you will, is kind of based off of this video I came across, uh, while well, I guess the term is perusing, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, on the internet, um, scrolling through social media, whatever, and I came across this video. And, um, I would encourage you to quickly pause the video and go watch this video because you're going to need context for what I'm about to tell you tonight. 
and it's based off of this video. So if you've not seen this video, pause this one, go to the link in the description, watch the video that's there, and um, you'll have more context for tonight's message. So if you went and watched that video, welcome back. And if you didn't, you'll be sorry because you're not going to have context, but it's all good. Anyways, so for any of you that went and watched that video, you'll see that the, the dad went to give this child a french fry. And, or the, the child was eating a french fry. And the dad was basically trying to convince this child, like, hey, dip your fry in the ketchup. Like, it'll make it taste so much better, and, and you're going to love it. And the child was really skeptical, kind of looked at her dad like, mm, I don't know if I want to dip that fry in that ketchup. Like, I don't know. And, and the dad, I'm going to quote one of the parts from the video, and the dad literally said something along the lines of, like, don't be skeptical, this is going to change your life. Now, that's a little dramatic for a condiment on a deep-fried potato, but I just love the point, though, that the dad was making. Like, you know, I've, I'm more experienced, I know what's best, I know that you'll love this. And sure enough, the kid finally is like, okay, I'll try it, whatever. And it's, it's like this, looks to be maybe, I don't know, a two-year-old kid, like very young child. And the child takes a bite and actually starts doing like kind of a happy dance of sorts. And I saw this video and I watched it a few times because it was a very short video. So I watched it a few times. Because it just, well, one, it was really hilarious, so I watched it a few times. But then, I realized that there was actually quite a spiritual point behind this video. Obviously, I'm sure, like, I don't know if this family is quote-unquote religious or not, but I just then realized, I'm like, it's kind of the same way with us and God. How God will try to present us with something better, but we're so focused on what's in front of us that we're kind of skeptical and we're like, God, like, I don't know, like, this thing here seems like a pretty sweet deal. And I'm actually going to tell you guys a personal story of mine. Um, obviously, I'm not going to give too many details just being on social media and everything, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a personal story. And kind of how this was applied in my life and how God really challenged me over the, the last few weeks or so. So, um, any of you guys out there that know me on a personal level know that uh, recently I have purchased my first vehicle. And as said, I'm not going to give all the details and stuff because this is a very public page and I still try to have some somewhat of privacy. But anyway, I made my first vehicle purchase a few weeks back. And let me tell you, the search was long and at times kind of difficult. And I'm sure many of you guys out there, you know, buying a car can be a pain in the butt to say the least. Uh, it's exciting, but it can be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to tell you guys a story of what happened. Once again, I'm not going to like name drop or like give extreme details, but I'm just going to give you guys a general overview of kind of something that happened in my life. And hopefully you can kind of apply it to your life and use it as kind of an object lesson. I've been air quoting a lot tonight. Anyway, so I was looking online at some ads and stuff like that. And I went and looked at a couple of cars. They didn't seem like bad or anything, but I just didn't have that, that feeling of like, oh, I should go for this. So I kept looking around. I came across this other car. 
and I was like, and, and I just want to tell you guys, I've been contemplating the last few weeks. I'm like, should I tell this story online or should I just leave it? But I really feel led to tell you guys this story, so I'm going to tell it. But anyway, so I come across this car and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a nice car. And like, I'm not going to say like all the details, but anyway, I was like, this is a really nice car. And I looked at the, um, actually I got the ad sent to me by a family member. Um, so I, I looked at the ad and I was like, okay, it's, it's got a bit of mileage on it, but everything else seems to be okay. There's no harm in the least going and looking at it. So I went and had a look at it, um, in a socially distanced manner, of course. Um, but yeah, I went and had a look at it and, um, I actually had a relative of mine come with me because of it being my first car, like, I wanted somebody to come with me so I didn't get into something sketchy, and, um, I had a family member come with me, and my family member had checked the undercarriage and all that. There was, like, a few rust spots and stuff, but for the year of the car it was and everything, it wasn't terrible. So, we started the car to see how it ran. It was running good. We thought everything was all fine and dandy. So I was like, okay, you know what? This this car seems great uh, for a first car. A few little minor things need to be done, but nothing crazy. I think I'm doing pretty good to get what I'm getting for my price range that I was going for. So I was like, let's do it. And so I gave the person who was selling the vehicle um, a down payment so they could get it safety. So, um... So yeah, then went on with my day, and the person was like, well, I still need the car for, like, the next few days, but you can pick it up next week. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So, um, I think it was that Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember. Um, I was supposed to be getting the car on a Friday, and I think it was, like, the Monday. And I was literally about to go out the door to go to work and I found out that basically the person went to get it safety and the I can't remember exactly like what was wrong or what happened but basically uh, the person was like well for as much money as you're gonna have to invest in getting all the stuff done for the safety it's not even worth your time so and as said when you're looking for a car, if you're just kind of looking around, it gets sold, it's like, okay, not a big deal, you know, another ad will come. But y'all gotta keep in mind, I had already given a down payment. I was supposed to be getting this car. And of course, you know, it being my first car, I was really excited. And I'm sure many of you at home, even if, even if it's not the car situation, maybe there's something in your life that you were really excited for. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, especially with coronavirus, right? Maybe there was something you were really excited for and, and it didn't come through. And and I think we all can relate to that right now because, like, with COVID, right? Like, maybe you were going to go to a concert and, like, obviously, right now, I don't even think a lot of concerts are still going on even though things are opening while well, driving concerts and stuff like that. But anyway, the point is, um, you know, maybe there was, like, an event or different things like that that you were anticipating, that you were looking forward to, that you were excited for, and they did not come through, they did not happen, or got postponed, or whatever the situation is. And, um, obviously that, that leaves you feeling mighty disappointed. And, I remember just completely, like, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I'd, I'd love to sit here and say, you know, the typical, like, cliche, like, churchy, you know, oh, well, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord, and I just moved on with my day, but that is not how it was, and by the way, that statement was not to, like, blaspheme the Bible or anything, like, I'm sorry if that came across like that, that's not my intention, I'm just saying that I did not have that, like, I didn't have a very Christ-like response, I'm not gonna lie. I was very upset. Um, I was 
I, I basically wanted to give up. I was, like, just done. Because I'm, like, I've spent, like, a couple months, month, a couple months or so searching for cars. I finally get one that seems like it's going to be good. And boom, gone. And, and of course, like, many of you know, for anybody that has a car out there, like, getting a car is not just, like, oh, okay, getting a car. It's, like, a symbol of, like, independence and and freedom and when you feel like that's stripped away especially with after everything like I hate to keep bringing up coronavirus but especially after all this coronavirus stuff like could really go for some independence and freedom right now you know and um I understand why why the freedom's being restricted like I'm not trying to be one of those like COVID conspiracy theorists but I'm just saying that you know this was kind of a way to have freedom and some independence and things. And so, needless to say, I, I basically, like, broke down. I lost it. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, and I was, like, kind of, like, I'm just gonna be honest. I was kind of mad at God. I'm like, well, you know, I'm gonna be using this, this vehicle to do things for you. Like, I wanted to use this as, as a tool to go places and do things for you. And, like, I, I'm going to admit, like, this is exactly what I said to God, which, like, I, of course, regret now. Um, but I'm just being real with you guys, because I'm sure there's somebody out there going through something right now, and they need to hear this. And I remember basically praying something along the lines of, well, joke's on you, because you're just delaying your own process. And, uh, I know that's, that's kind of a cocky prayer to be praying to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Like, I'm not saying I'm proud of it. I'm just saying that, like, that's, that's what I said, because I was like, hey, you know, I'm getting this car to do stuff for you, and every time I come across something, it ends up failing. So, if you want to delay your own process, that's on you. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of using, like, two parallel illustrations here tonight. So, I'm sorry if this video seems kind of all over the place, but anyways, so, I was texting, um, actually, Azita, which you guys know, I've, I've had her on here a few times, and we're hoping to, probably within the next few weeks, I, I don't know, I'm not gonna give you guys a time, just in case, because as said, like, we're both back at work now, so I don't know when we're gonna be able to, like, get together to film and stuff. But we are hoping to have her on here a bit more. But, um, anyways, I was texting her, and of course I was really upset about everything. And, um, and what I love about Azita is she will tell you what you need to hear, even if you don't want to hear it. But she does it in a way that's very loving and kind. Shout out to Azita if you're watching. How's it going? But anyways, so... She basically texted me and was like, hey, like, why are you going on about, like, wanting to give up and all this stuff? Like, she's like, obviously, if this didn't work out, it just means that God has something better for you. And, of course, in the moment, you're like, oh, here we go. Like, typical Christian cl cliche thing to say. Like, oh, if this isn't working out, God must have something better for you. Like, and, and so, like, when she first said it, I didn't take her seriously. I was like, yeah, okay, like, that's what everybody says every time you go through a hard time. Like, she's just trying to be nice, you know. And, and I, you know, was kind of skeptical, right? And she's like, well, you need to let God have control of this. She's like, you're trying to, you know, control it. You're trying to just, you know do what you need to do, but you're not really, like, giving God control, and, uh, as I, as I even told you guys, I think it was on, it was either the last video or the video before, where basically, like, a lot of times we, we give God, like, we let him go in the driver's seat, but we still kind of try to, like, backseat drive, like, we still kind of try to nudge him, like, what direction to go and stuff like that, but we need to actually let him drive, right? So it was like that same point that she was making where she's like, okay, you're, you're giving God control of these all, all these other areas, but yet this one thing, you're still kind of holding on to it. You need to let him control it because it will ultimately work out for your good. But she's like, the reason why things aren't working out for you 
is because you're trying to do everything by yourself, which is not realistic by even human standards, but especially when you're supposed to be a follower of the Lord, the, literally the whole point is that you're not supposed to do it on your own. And of course, like this was, you know, a hard pill to swallow because I was still kind of in that low, like, woe is me, you know, state. Um, but I got to thinking about it and I'm like, you know what? No, like that's actually a good point. And I kind of realized, like, as I was saying to you guys, like, my motivations for getting the car, like, yeah, you know, was genuinely for, like, doing stuff for the Lord and stuff, but I'm not gonna say that there wasn't a little bit of that, ooh, independence, freedom, you know, and I think sometimes it's easy to get caught up in, like, the motivations of why we're, like, how do I want to word this? It's kind of easy to just get caught up in, like, oh, I just need a car, I'm just gonna settle. Where you should take time to make sure you're getting something that's of good quality and that's gonna do you good service, not just like, oh, cool, it's got four wheels and a frame, I need a car, let's just do it. Like, I think sometimes if there's not a quick fix for something, we're just so quick to be like, okay, fine, we'll just do this, we'll just settle for this. And... I'm not trying to be all, like, prosperity gospel, but, like, God doesn't just want you to settle. And, and I don't, I know I'm using this for, like, a car illustration, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be all, like, don't settle for a Ford F-150, go get that Lamborghini. Like, that's not what I'm trying to advocate. Like, we shouldn't just use God as, like, a, like, a prosperity, like, transaction type thing. Like, that's not, that's not the point I'm trying to make. I know the way I'm wording it might be sending mixed messages, but I do want to clarify, like, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be one of those prosperity preachers that's like, don't settle for nothing unless you are a child of God, go get three private jets, like, no, that's not what I'm saying, but at the same time, God wants what's best for you, but what he might think is best might not, well, usually does not line up with what you think is best, which is literally the whole point of the gospel in of itself, um, which I think we need reminding of that sometimes, that we often think that something's best for us, but it's not. Um, or maybe it's like a different way. It's kind of like as a kid, right? How you don't want to eat your vegetables, but your parents force you to because they know that's what's best for you. God does the same thing. He knows what's best for us better than we know. And so we might be looking at him like, huh, I don't think that's best, but in reality, it is. So anyways... The person, like, which obviously, like, I'm not going to name drop or nothing, but they were super good about it. They gave me back the down payment and all that, and they were not trying to be deceptive in any way. They thought that everything was fine, but um, this also just goes to show that if you're shopping for cars, you need to be really careful because it can seem all fine and dandy and not be, so I'm glad I didn't end up with that car. But of course, at the time, I was kind of upset. And once again, though, and even Azita brought up that point, though, she's like, well, if this thing was such a piece of junk, like, why are you upset you didn't end up with it? Like, aren't you happy you didn't end up with that? You know, and but anyway, so then um, another relative of mine came across an ad for the car that I now have. Oops, I spoiled it, but anyway, you, you guys probably knew it was taking this direction. But anyway, so, um, but a relative of mine had come across the ad for the car that I now own, and, uh, sent me the link, I took a look, and I was like, wow, this is actually better than the other one I was looking at, and didn't have a lot of mileage on it. It looked to be in, like, really great condition. Um, the price was reasonable. And, uh, so, once again, we got the person to safety it. The safety passed with flying colors. And I was like, alright, let's go take a look at it. You know, we'll do what we need to do. So we went and took a look at it. And, um, once again, had a relative come with me. Checked the undercarriage. Everything looked really good. Um, there's like a little bit of surface rust, but not like anything that would actually rot anything. And um, there's no like mechanical issues or anything like that. So, 
Um, once again, you know, we ran it to check everything, checked under the hood, all that fun stuff. Everything was great. And so I was like, all right, you know what? And, and of course, since this other car thing had happened with the previous one, right? I, of course, got to that point of giving up, which I know I made it sound like a bad thing, but in a way I needed to give up. And I know what y'all are thinking. Girl, no, like, you didn't need to give up. Like, did you not listen to what Azita texted you? But no, like, um, I just mean that sometimes we have to get to that low point of giving up. We need to give up. Not, not give up in, like, a pitiful, like, oh, woe is me, like, I want everybody to feel sorry for me. But give up in a way that, of submitting our lives to the Lord and letting him have control. Which we, we say so easily, but yet when it comes to the actual situation, we have a hard time. Um, so anyways, I had gotten to that point where I gave up, but in a way, rather than give up in a way of like being upset and being in despair, of giving up in a way of, hey... God, you obviously see that every time I go for a car, something goes wrong. So, you're going to need to take over here. Which, really, I should have just let him have control from the beginning. And probably would have saved myself all this pain. But, hey, God sends this as a learning experience. And I feel like God is using this right now for me to minister to someone. Because I know there's somebody out there watching right now. I don't know who it is. It's none of my business. That's between you and the Lord. But there's somebody out there who needs to hear this. Who is going through something. And just needs a touch from the Lord. And so, I'm kind of glad this happened. Because I'm using this as, as a way to minister to people out there. So anyway, um, as said, we went, looked at everything. and Or I would prayed beforehand and was like, hey God, like, every single car I've come across either ends up having some sort of problem or ends up not working out. But, like... Um, I'm not even going to try to, like, I'm not going to stress out about it. If it works out, and I, I, I literally prayed this to him, like, if you want me to have this car, it's going to be in my driveway. And if not, it'll stay at the, at the owner's place. Won't even make it back to my place. And, uh, I'm not going to stress out about it. I'll know that you want me to have this car when it's sitting in my driveway and my ownership switch over, <laughs> switched over. So, um, where the other one, I was stressing out about it because once again, I didn't realize it, but I was trying to do everything myself, which is not realistic. So, um, as said, took a look at the car, everything was great, and, uh, ended up getting this car and this car is amazing for a first car like most people's first cars are like these old like rusty pieces of junk that you got to get repaired every paycheck like this one it runs really well it's in great condition um doesn't have a lot of mileage on it it's it's really i've had it for a few weeks now and it's done me a lot of good um, haven't had any, like, major issues with it, um, and, uh, you know, I prayed for the need and God provided it. Uh, he didn't provide the need in, in a way that I expected, but it ended up playing out well in the end. And why wouldn't it? Because God doesn't make mistakes. I'm just saying that, um... Now, to bring things back to that other illustration I was using, because I'm kind of using two parallel illustrations here. You know, in that video with the child and, and the dad, and the dad's holding the, the fry, and he dips it in the ketchup, and he's like, here, you know, try the fry with the ketchup. And, and the kid is so focused on the fact that they're just eating a plain fry that they're like, why would you add anything to my fry? Like, let me just eat my fry, dad, you know? And, and the dad's like, come on, like, the ketchup makes it so much better. And the kid kind of is just, like, obviously not saying all this, but is kind of looking at the dad like, you know, no, like, I'm doing this. And the kid thinks that what they're doing is the best thing ever. 
Then when the kid gets a taste of that ketchup, game changer. Kid starts dancing, the kid's happy. And I feel like I had a skeptical uh, child, you know, dipping the fry in the ketchup situation. You know, where I had this other car. Well, I didn't have it, but I was going to buy this other car because I thought it was all great. Meanwhile, God was over here. Obviously, I didn't know at the time, but God was over here like, no, like this one is way better. This is the one you're meant to have. This one's going to do you more good. But yeah, I was so focused on this other one that when this one was gone, I was just so focused on that. But yet, the whole time, God was orchestrating me to get this other one. And another fun fact about the car I ended up getting. Um, I find this really funny. And I don't believe that this is just coincidence. You know, a lot of y'all out there are probably thinking, oh, it was just, you know, perfect timing or whatever. Yeah, perfect timing from the Lord. Amen. But anyway, I actually ended up getting the car that I have now on the same day that I was going to be getting the other car that I was supposed to be getting, quote unquote, supposed to be getting. Obviously, I wasn't supposed to be getting it. And um, so I found that really interesting. That and, and that's the thing. I think some people, they get kind of mad at God's timing. And I thought that maybe God's timing was different, but really his timing was the same. It was just the different final product. And so I found it really cool that I ended up actually still getting a car when I would have had the other one. But of course, I ended up with something way better that I'm enjoying way better that is mechanically better. And um, once again, like this is why I'm not name dropping or anything, because I don't want to like talk smack. The, the owner of the other one was super good about everything and really honest about stuff. And um, it was just kind of an honest, like, he didn't know. So, like, I'm not trying to, like, talk smack about anybody. Um, but, yeah, like, I ended up with something way better than I could have ever imagined. Because when I first started looking for a car, I did, I did not think I was going to end up with what I got. I thought, okay, you know, I'm, I'm just going to get something to get me from point A to point B, you know. Uh, it's probably going to be kind of rusty, you know, different things. But, like, if you guys saw this car, like, and any of you out there that know me on a personal basis have seen it, it is actually a really nice car for, like, a first car. Like, most people do not end up with what I have for a first car. Because normally your first car is kind of just, like, this old, you know, whatever... Mm -hmm. No, this, this car is, like, really nice. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying, I know it sounds like I'm just bragging about my car. I'm not, I'm not trying to be all, ooh, look at me, I have a nice car, and you don't. Like, that, I'm just saying that God had bigger plans for me than I had for myself. And, uh, I don't want to take credit for that phrase, because I forget who originally came up with that phrase, but I don't want to take credit for that, because I did not come up with that, but... But it's true, like, God had bigger plans for me than I had for myself. He had something so much better. And, but yeah, I was so focused on this other thing. And going back to, like, the kid with the fry. The kid was so focused on just eating the fry by itself that she was not realizing that the ketchup would actually make it a better experience. And I know, like, you know, watching the video, you just think it's, like, a stupid, like, kind of funny video. But... I, I hope that through watching this video that you realize that the video kind of, even without the people realizing, it kind of ended up having a spiritual point. Um, so, I say all this, like, I'm not just doing this as, like, a kind of what YouTubers, I guess, call a story time video. Like, I'm not just doing this to be like, hey guys, here's another stupid story. Like, I'm I'm really hoping that you've, you've got the point I'm trying to make out of this. And I'm just saying this to say that, you know, if you're at home tonight and, you know, you're waiting on something from the Lord, don't give up. Keep praying. He might not be providing it right now. He might not be providing it in, like, the way that you would find fit. <laughs> but he will come through. He will provide whatever it is you're, you're needing. It might not be in the timing that you are expecting or in the way that you're expecting. But he will provide it. Don't stop praying. Don't give up. Or if you are going to give up, 
give up in a way of like, oh, I give up, I'm going to give the Lord control, but don't give up in a way of like despair and that sort of stuff. Leave it in God's hands. And also, when you're praying, be careful what you pray for, because <laughs> the previous car, what I, what I forgot to mention, what I failed to mention was the previous car, I had actually prayed a similar prayer of, God, if you want me to have this car, it'll end up in my driveway, and if you don't, it won't. But sometimes we pray things like that to God, and we kind of already have our answer determined. Like, oh, God, like, if you want this to whatever, you're going to make it happen. But yet what we're actually praying is, you're going to make it happen. But like, <laughs> so I feel like that's probably exactly why the first car did not work out, because I told God, I was like, okay, if you don't want it to happen, it won't be in my driveway. But in the back of my head, I was like, I really hope it happens, you know? So, obviously God was like, well, I don't want it to happen, so it's not going in your driveway. So, I say this to say, A, be careful what you pray for. And <laughs> in all seriousness, though, like, it worked out. And, uh, and the minute I let God have control, that's when things came together. And, uh... It might happen in different timing for you, so, like, this isn't to say, hey, the minute you give God control, that things are just going to magically happen. Like, God has his timing, and I, I don't determine what God's timing is going to be for you. It might be different for you than it was for me. Um, but if there's somebody out there right now that's waiting on the Lord for something, whether it be, like, a financial need, whether it be, like, um... You know, I think a lot of people my age, right, like, we're looking we're looking for partners, right? Or, like, you know, all these different things. Or if you're looking for a vehicle. Or if you're trying to have a baby. Or whatever it is. There's so many needs out there. Maybe it's a health need. Maybe it's, like, the list goes on. Whatever your need is, God will provide it. And I think sometimes, like... We, we pray prayers like, oh God, would you please like provide this need or whatever. Lately, I've started praying prayers like basically claiming the promises from the word of God. The Bible says that God will, will provide our needs. He's not just up there like, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to provide this need this time. Because you know what? If we're still on this planet right now, obviously God's providing our needs. We need air to breathe. We need a heartbeat, you know, to medically live. If God's still providing that, he is providing our needs. And so, you know, God literally provides the air you breathe. And he makes your heart beat. He makes your body work the way it's supposed to work. And all this different stuff. So, if you're still here, God still has a plan for you. Don't give up just because something's not working out, like, right in the timing that you thought was going to work out. I think coronavirus has taught us all that in, in a certain extent, but... As said, I'm not just making the coronavirus reference, because even though we're still in a global pandemic, this does not mean that people aren't going through personal issues. So, whatever your need is, keep praying. Don't give up. God will provide it. And uh, we're actually going to end with a closing prayer. And if you have a prayer request... If you feel comfortable sharing your need, you can either comment it or you can email heavenlyfootstepsministries at gmail.com if you want to be more private. You can also private message the page. You can get a hold of me personally if, if you know me on a personal basis. Contact me somehow through either of those avenues and I'd love to pray with you online and pray for your needs specifically. You can even put like an unspoken request if you don't want to give all the details. Um, but I would just love to pray for you. But I am going to close with like a kind of a generic like praying for everyone. And uh, we'll send you on your way. Dear God, um, as said, the past few weeks I wasn't really sure if I was supposed to tell this story. But I felt really led to tell this story. And I know that you have led me to tell this story for a reason. There's someone out there that needs to hear it tonight. So God, whoever's out there. I don't know what their, their needs are, but you do, and maybe they don't even know what their needs are, but, but you know them better than they know themselves. 
you know them better than I know them. So whatever their needs are, God, I just ask that you, um, I know that you will provide them. You know, I think a lot of times we pray, oh, we ask that you provide them. We already know you're going to provide the needs, God. The Bible says that, that you are a provider, that you're going to provide our needs. And so I, I claim that promise in the name of Jesus. I know that you're going to come through. I know that you're going to provide. It might not be in the way that I would see it or that this person or people would see it. But God, you're going to come through. And God, just make this person feel close to you or people. Like, make everyone feel close to you. And just help them to know that you are near. Help them to leave it in your hands. Help them to just not stress out, to trust you for whatever need it is. Lord, whether it's a financial need, whether it's a health need, whether it's all these different things, whether it's buying a car, whatever it is, God, just help them to continue to trust in you. Lean not on their own understanding. In all of uh, all their ways, submitting to you. So, God, uh, just help us to take the story of, of the video with the kid being skeptical about the, the ketchup. Lord, you know, you're, you're holding out spiritual ketchup for us to dip our fry in. And sometimes we're so focused on eating the french fry that we don't want to dip it in the ketchup. But God, you have so much better for us. You want what's best for us. You want us to be happy. You want that spiritual french fry to taste good. So God, help us to take the plunge. Help us to dip our spiritual fry in that ketchup. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not gonna lie, I did not see the prayer taking that turn. But it's true. Go out there and plunge. Take the plunge. Dip your spiritual fry into that ketchup. And, of course, what I mean by that is, like, let God have the control. He has something that is great, that is going to make your life better. And you might not see it right away, just like how the kid didn't think that it was going to make the fry better right away, right? But I guarantee you, when you dip your spiritual fry in that spiritual ketchup that God has for you, it's going to make your life better. It's going to change your life, as, as the guy said in the video. Of course, this one will actually change your life eternally, not just make your french fry taste good. But, um, you get, you hopefully get the point I'm trying to make. But anyways, thank you for watching. Once again, sorry that the videos have not been coming out as much. Um, I'm hoping to, uh, put videos out a bit more. Um, but we'll just have to see. Um, for right now... I'm, I'm going to still try to stick to the every other Tuesday, but there might be times that it's not right on that schedule. So you're just going to have to turn on your notifications and just make sure to stay tuned. Um, I wish I could give a bit more of a structured schedule, but I am working full time now. And so it's it really just depends when um, I can film and everything. But I do want to thank you for your support. Um, I've had church family, friends, biological family on here supporting this ministry. Um, I would encourage you to share this video with uh, with anybody you know. Feel free to post it on your social media as well. We want the gospel message to be getting out to as many people as possible. It's the whole point of this online ministry. And uh, I forget how many people we're up to on this page, but it, it keeps growing. I've actually been receiving several notifications from Facebook over the past couple weeks that we've had new views. I don't know if, I don't think that's like a, comment below if you know what that means, but I, I'm pretty sure that the views either means people that have checked out the page or people that have watched a video for at least a minute or something like that. So we haven't been getting as many likes, but we've still been having people check out the page. So not that it's about the views or the likes, but it's just good to see that God is continuing to grow this ministry. And even though it was started during the quarantine, kind of for that purpose of doing ministry because we couldn't physically get get together, even though we can get together in a socially distanced manner, of course, um, I think that God still wants to use online ministry. So continue to pray as I continue to pursue this. And... Uh, once again, 
Thank you for your prayers and support. Continue to stay safe. As much as we are opened up now, we are not out of the woods. We are still in the midst of a global pandemic, unfortunately. So I'm going to end off by just reminding everybody, you know, be sure to still social distance from people um, outside of your household or circle of 10. Um, you know, wash your hands, uh, which you should have already been doing before the global pandemic, but especially right now, wash your hands, um, wear a mask where applicable. Um, yeah, we won't even get into all that because I know the mask thing is controversial, but just do what you gotta do. Um, we'll eventually get through this. It's gonna be a long journey, but we we'll get through it. But this is not the time to give up and not do what we're supposed to be doing. Um, because especially now things are opening up and we are coming into contact with more people. We don't need to make the virus spread more than it already is. So stay vigilant. I know it's been a long journey, but we need to do what's best for ourselves, our families, our friends, and everyone around us. Once again, not going to get into that though, because I know like all the mask thing, unfortunately, like there's just so much controversy surrounding COVID. Um, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it really shouldn't be a political issue. It should be a matter of public health and safety, but I told myself we wouldn't get into that. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to stop there. We're just going to put a stop to it right there. But anyways, stay safe, have a great night, and hopefully I will see you guys on here in a couple weeks again with another video, um, giving you guys a gospel message. And just coming together for some online fellowship together as a Christian community. Once again, if you'd like to reach out, email me, contact me somehow. I'd love to get in touch with you guys. Thanks again. God bless.